Welcome to Ear Biscuits. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. Joining us at the round table of dim lighting tonight, we have Jason Mark. Dude has got a great story and a great business. He is the originator of the sneaker drop off cleaning service. Yes. Where you drop off your sneakers and they're clean. Sneaker care. Sneaker, sneaker care, care is it's the not official just cleaning, description. Sneaker care, yeah. This guy cares about sneakers and he cares for sneakers. And we wanted to talk to In him. In a world where a lot of people care a whole lot about sneakers, and we wanted and that's to talk fascinating. to him. Not because, now, first of all, we're a whole lot more sneaker head than we were, say, five years ago. I'm informed a little bit. But definitely not actually sneaker heads. But right. we are fascinated by people who have made a decision to do something where they followed a dream, had an innovative idea, and yeah. like it came to fruition, and the story of that, like that, that's a mythical thing. Just like we've been talking about. We wanna talk to mythical people about mythical things that they're doing that kind of embody mythicality. And Jason Mark embodies mythicality because he's doing something that is completely original and creative, uh, something that is kind of challenges a paradigm. Um, and he's just, a, he's just a good guy, local guy here So I would say Los even, Angeles. even if you're not into sneakers, I think you're really gonna be into this conversation because it's it's got this inspirational quality to it that uh, you can benefit from mythical beasts. Nobody cried though. I mean, spoiler. I mean, you got close. There was a there was a discussion about crying. Yeah, and there was a a story that brought some people to tears. Some people and some I'm people just might. Saying. You know, I'm just saying. And he also there was some blood involved at another point. Serendipitously, wow, he wore his mustache tonight. As did you. <laughs> yes. Which did you, so did you shave this in because you knew Jason was coming and had a mustache? No, I thank you for acknowledging my mustache. Oh, is there another reason for it? Um, the reason is, you, you know the reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I, I'm doing what they call playing dumb, Link. What I did, the first thing I noticed was not his his shoes, it was the fact, oh, he's got a mustache too. We're, yeah, and, we're mustache brethren. And did you, now one of the things we talked about is how you acknowledge when somebody has the same car, the same shoes or whatever, but did you do a mustache acknowledgement? I, I nod? I no, I did not nod at the mustache, but I I, I assessed it. So you looked at his lip. A lot of times no, I, I looked at the mustache above the lip. I know the but whole the whole you, conversation. You, you you can't tell when somebody's looking at your mustache or your lip. Okay, what am well, I, I can tell. Okay, what am I looking at right now? Uh, the microphone. <laughs> And what You're looking, looking at? at my mustache. It's irresistible. No, I'm looking at your lips. Oh. I mean, I'm not comfortable doing it. Now look at my mustache. Because that's the kind of look thing. Look at my mustache. Now look at the lips. Okay, I could see the. You see the, difference. See the difference. You can see the comparative difference. Yeah, but, but that's something like I remember in like middle school. Like Tate told me that if you want, it could have been Michael Juby. I don't know. One of those guys that had kissed some ladies. Mm -hmm. He was like, you let a girl know you want to kiss her when you look at her lips. So like you're looking yeah. at her and then you look down at the lips and you look back and you look down at the lips and then she's like, oh, I know what's up. Or you could just start, you could just go in for the kiss. Well, you don't, or you could, I mean. I'm not talking like about a, just like any. You don't wanna just go in for the kiss, you wanna ask permission. I'm not talking. At least with a look well, at the I'm, lips. I'm not talking about like you just sit next to any anybody. I'm talking about like. You, a loved there, one. There's a relationship already happening. Um, so I, I'm just letting you know, that's not what's happening right now. I'm just evaluating well, I your mustache. I wasn't, I, I actually wasn't, the thought didn't cross my mind, right? Yeah. So you clarifying it just made it weird. Yeah. Made it awkward. Um, of course my mustache is not making anything awkward, is it? <laughs> uh, this is this is day two of me having the mustache. Cutting the mustache in. Of cutting it in, you know, I, I, I knew I wanted to grow a mustache as an option for Buddy System season two. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And it's I mean, it's probably gonna be there. Probably gonna be, be there. But we still reserve the right to not have it. You, you reserve the right. You say we. I I, I mean, you ha you do have a say. Yeah, but I think, uh, and I, mean, can, I think you get 51% 51, 51 in right, this decision. Right, I, I get, I get Which the, is basically the whole decision. There's only two Well, no, I, I'm interested in what you have to say, but I miss the days when my facial hair would change constantly. And I, you know, I just like, I like, having the option to do that for buddy system because it could enhance the story. It, oh, it, could, it could fit into what we're doing. 
I dropped um, something. You dropped something? You all right? Oh, gosh. What? Are you serious? You go in that hole? Oh, gosh. Did it go in? No way it went in the hole. Dude, it's behind you, man. Oh, Why is your... I'll tell you what that is later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's going to keep you in I suspense. I thought it went in one of those holes, too. <laughs> I was like, I don't, mean, I don't even think it fits in there. There's it. a hole down there. Yeah, it does. It, it does fit. What is it that he was talking about? That's what a, was I saying? That's a teaser. You talked about how you. Um, oh, the reason I, I this is an I had an opportunity to have my mustache for Buddy System te- and season it, two, and it may enhance it may enhance your performance. And we're just a few days away from starting to shoot. I'm very excited. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of nervous, but the mustache. I mean, I had the beard. You know, I don't. I didn't want to just grow in a mustache. So I. You don't do that. No one in their right mind just grows a mustache. You grow a beard, and then whenever it you have a mustache within that beard, then you take the beard away. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it is possible to do it the other way, but I do think that's you, 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 you're doing it the easy way. Well, then you got to explain like why you're slowly growing a mustache. There's a lot of more. Every there's day. more awkward phases. Yeah, there's more. Yeah, and, and all the conversations. Like when you're growing a beard, it's like, oh, you're growing a beard. When you're growing a mustache, it's like, you're growing a mustache or you, you need to bathe up there. So but now you have I to grew deal a beard, with. And, and then I, yeah, I have to deal with the shock of the moment that I go, I leave the, re- the bathroom and I, there's my family and they all turn and look at me in horror because I have a mustache. They all hate it. Do they know this was happening? I told them it was happening, but until you see it, it's not something I, I it turns out you're not prepared for. According to their response, you know, and then I come into work yesterday morning. Oh, and it's so like, your your wife hates it. Oh, she hates it. Ooh. Her her dad had a mustache for a long time. Really? And he still occasionally still has one. And I don't think she wants to be married to her dad. Hmm. That's weird. That says something about their relationship. I'm not. I gonna, just mean, I'm not going to play psychology. I just mean here. specifically. She doesn't want to marry her dad. Well, that's it's healthy. a pretty simple thing. That's a, that's a, that's yeah, a healthy thing. It's simple. As a non psychologist, I can confirm. Yeah, that's you a don't have to be thing. a psychologist. No, that's a good idea. <laughs> don't marry your dad, dude. But I think the interesting thing is that there are int- there are cultural connotations associated with certain facial hair configurations. Uh huh. Right. That is a fact, and it's based on. It's based on these principles that only exist in the context of culture. In other words, if an alien were to come down in his or her ship and meet you mm-hmm. and you were the only human, they would just make an observation. Has hair over lower hole, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what they <laughs> That ain't the lower hole, bro. Lower that, hole of the face. That's the higher hole. I got no <laughs> Uh, face orifice. Well, they wouldn't be speaking English, but you get, and I don't know why they talk like a robot. Robot? I don't know either. Because they are. Has hair over <laughs> lower orifice facial of orifice. facial orifice. In other words, there would be no like, must be fireman. They don't know that. <laughs> you know, they don't <laughs> They don't know that yet. Must be volunteer fireman. Must get, you know, I'm not, there's other things that, uh, there's other things. Must that, be stuck in 80s. Well, there's lots of things that people, there's certain, you know, things that people think that you might be into if you have a mustache, stuff that we won't even go into. But my mustache isn't that thin. It doesn't even matter though, I'm saying it's, that. It's taller than that. You have to now deal with the perception that people have of people with mustaches. My, my, main, my main concern is that it's like, you look old, you look so much older, you look like a dad. Well, first of all, I am a dad. Who gave you that piece my, of advice? My, my family. Hmm. Christy said, you look old, and I'm like, well, you know, I am old. R- Rhett has a beard. Lots of people have beards now, and they no longer have a connotation of old or mountain men. But that was probably how it was before. The reason but why think about when I cut my beard off for last season, you how, did look I, a lot like, younger. I, lo- I looked like twenty four, right? I but like you, a baby. But but you with that beard doesn't look as old as me with this mustache. But the reason why is not because it aged you. It's because culturally, it's a so people associate it with their dads, or. Some, I mean, I think we're getting out of that now. Like, I don't think millennials' dads have mustaches, or less of them did than like our dads. Well, had mustaches. Well, now the thing is, that my dad had a mustache. Most people, which subconsciously is why I want a mustache. Most people who have mustaches 
now have ironic mustaches. So we haven't gotten past I- irony when it comes to the mu- the modern mustache. But a guy like Jason, who we're about to have the conversation That's with. That's an ironic mustache. He right? has an ironic mustache, but he's such a sincere guy that I don't think. He's just cool. Yeah, it's just cool. But I'm saying. So why can't I have that? Why can't this be? This it, can this be ironic? Well, that's actually in real life. What? I, what? Of course it can. I'm saying it definitely is, and that's kind of what I wanted to say. Is that if I were to meet Good, you, meaning I, I'm, I don't have to fight fires. I saw, I'm just concerned that I have. No, to no. Fight I'm fires. saying that this is, and this is why I want to have a, an extended like once we complete your look, okay, and whatever that's going to be. I think we have to have the conversation of what is the interpretation of the mustache because yes, I think that we would both agree that we don't want it to be interpreted as an ironic mustache. Uh, I don't totally agree with but, that. But maybe, is it okay yeah, if it's- Yeah, there's a percentage. Is it okay if it's just this ambiguous thing? Yeah. Because, you know, okay, I, you, you know, if I meet you in LA and I'm like, okay, well, his clothes fit. You know what I'm saying? It's like you you don't have on like a NASCAR shirt that's three sizes too big. Not to pick on the NASCAR people. I'm just saying that if you've got a NASCAR shirt that's three sizes too big and you got a mustache, it's not an ironic mustache. I right. don't care how you hard are, you wish. It it is. It's not. Right. You also have a, a volunteer fire department beeper on your belt. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. If you work if if you're a volunteer fireman and you have a mustache, you have a purposeful fireman's mustache. And I respect that, yeah, but you, it's not ironic. By the way, you know why? The smoke it absorbs the smoke. It absorbs, it, it filters the smoke. You still you still breathe the smoke, but you don't breathe the bad parts You know of the, the real smoke. reason why firemen and policemen have mustaches? Yeah, I just told you. No, the real reason. Yeah, yeah, I know that one, but I'm not gonna tell you. The real reason is because it is the only facial hair that is allowed in many fire departments and police departments. Beards, oh, regulations. Beards are not allowed in, in, the, in the military or in most police, uh, Academy, you know, mm-hmm. uh, police forces, and probably fire department. And a man wants to have and facial. If, hair. if I'm going to have facial hair, man, well, where can I have it? Okay, that's where I'm going to have it. And so yeah. it became associated. It was actually the re, it was the result of a regulation that they had no say in, right? That then became a cultural association with people who do a certain vocation. Mm, that's sweet. That's crazy. And I'm I'm and glad you I'm are, glad to be folded into that legacy. No, but there's nothing else about you that says fireman. No, there's not. Nothing, right? Well, I mean, if the fire started right here, I could probably put it out. Yeah. But no and better, that would no say better than me. No better than me. Well, let let's let Let's set a fire and find out. Yeah, let's let's not Can presume. we do that? Let's not presume that I couldn't do it. So you have me. I do have a mustache. You have an ironic mustache and that may be okay. I don't think there's any way that it's not going to be perceived as ironic. Right. But how would you feel about yourself if you Ooh. met yourself? Because I can tell you how I feel about you if I didn't know you were growing it out for a mm. role. I'd be like, oh, this guy thinks he's cool. Oh, is that it? This guy thinks he's so cool. Of course, and I, I would think the same thing about me if I saw a guy with my hair or whatever. And even right. your hair too, you know? Even the beard. Yeah, even the beard in the context of where yeah. we live. Yeah. It's like, oh, that guy's trying. This guy's trying too hard. Guy thinks too much of himself. Thinks he's cool. Cares too much about his face. So you thought, spends too much time on himself in the morning. I'm flattered. That kind of thing. That, I'm flattered that you think no one would have thought that about me before the mustache. I or, think they would have thought that. Okay. Uh, but, but I they think, definitely think. But it. I think it's okay to think that. I kind of. I mean, I. I don't want you. I don't. I'm not trying to make it seem like I don't care what I look like. I'm just trying to conceal it a little bit. But when you do something that's like, and what I'm planning to do, what I'm planning to do potentially, which I won't reveal now, it's kind of the is same thing. worse. It's way worse and than an ironic it? mustache in terms of what people would conclude about me because of it. Way worse. I would say on a scale of one to ten, what I'm planning on doing is a nine. On the that guy is somebody I don't want to have a conversation with. So why are we doing it? Because it because is. Because cool. we can. I think because it is cool. Because it, I think it's cool. I don't care. You know, it's like, again, we get into why I have the tennis shoes I have in the thing. It's like I, I give the reason. Noise. You just made a clicking noise when you spoke. I thought that was cool too. Like, I think it's cool to make how, a clicking noise. How did noise. you do that? But I think it's cool to myself oh. to make a clicking noise. I almost sound like an artifact from a, like from the microphone. It was all in my mouth. I don't know how I did it. 
but it was I wish pretty I could cool, right? Yeah, it was. Now I think t- differently about your mustache. Um, I think we're gonna be posting footage of us while- Lots of footage. Of, not from Buddy System, but from the set of Buddy System, and I think that will be the, the answer to your question. Yeah. Um, the question that we put out there is that, is Lincoln have a mustache? It's like, well, it'll you, you'll fi- you'll find out. Yeah. Um, and is Rhett going to have something else? Right. Right now, I'm That's thinking. Worse. I'm thinking we're going to post those behind the scenes video moments on the This Is Mythical channel. So be subscribed to that. But if we and don't, they'll be le- somewhere. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. We're not going to make any promises. It's not a promise. It's just an assumption that may that may change. I like being a guy who has a mustache for a little bit of time because I know ultimately I will be a guy without a mustache. Yeah. I just like be I like I like being different hmm. than myself and most of the population who has more taste. Hmm. Part of being cool is that you throw taste out the window. It's like, you know, in spite of taste. Yeah, people who are cool don't don't even know it. The coolest people don't even know it. Yeah, I think Jason's one of those guys. I think he is. I think he is. He's so, he was such a, like, we try so hard. We think about all this being cool crap. Oh, we're trying so hard. It's, it's sad. Yeah, it is a little bit. We calculate so we can un, we can seem like we uncalculate Yeah, seem like you don't care. The dude care just so did much. a great thing. He did. He just and we did had a great thing, conversation and with he him. Had a, and he has a great mustache to go he along does. with. He does, you'll see it in a second and you'll, you'll hear it because you can, if you're just listening, you can hear, hear the slight muffled sound of his voice coming through that. <laughs> that Slightly, flavor saver. It's softened just the right amount by a stash. But first, we're going to take a short break to let you know that we have pomade. Well, hold on. We have mythical pomade. Are, do they all come dented? Why is that one dented? Oh, I think this may be dented because I don't know. It wasn't that way when I got it. It was that way when it fell out of my chair and did rolled around it? on the ground. Did you drop it? I did it. Well, I didn't, uh, dropping it would mean I, I had possession of it. It was just in between my legs and then it <laughs> popped right out. You can't, you, you're bad at possessing things between your legs? Yeah. Now, the thing I wanna talk about this, you know we've had this mythical pomade for a while and it's 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 what we do to get our hair to look like it is. You know, already know we care too much about you uh, what our be hair cool? looks like. You Here's wanna what be we're super saying. cool. You wanna be super cool. Yeah. Get this mythical pomade. But the thing that we wanted to talk about <laughs> today is the fact that this is also very good for the ladies. This is not just a men's product. Just because the two of us are men doesn't mean that you have to be a man to use this product. There's a lot of uh, a lot of the ladies around Mythical Entertainment actually use this to great effect. And because it's a it's light. It's a light, it's a it's light, light pomade. It's light on the It's senses. like a medium hold, but it yeah. also has a matte finish, and so it's just very versatile. So we encourage even you ladies to check out the Mythical Pomade. It's it's, it's super high quality ingredients. Make your hair natural, mythical. All that, get it at retinlink.com slash store. Do it. And now, on to the biscuit. I couldn't help but notice your shoes when you walked in because I feel like that's what people probably look at first. Absolutely. When you yeah. walk into a room. Yeah. If, have, when, if but they I know what look, you do. But I didn't look like directly at him. It was like staring at the sun. It was like, can't do it too long. I don't wanna be. <laughs> so what, what, did you, what did you wear in here? Um, what do we got? I got the uh, 97 Air Max in gold. Just retro. Like. Oh, can you, put, can you put it up here? Yeah. How flexible are you? Oh, just take the oh, shoe off. <laughs> This is like there we my go. Uh, second time wearing them, so. Really? Oh, and it's, look at all oh, that oh, hey, 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 ask permission, man. Oh, man. Where's no, Jason I, Mark? I, I, sorry. Please. Can yeah. you touch the shoe? May I touch I, the shoe? I, I just, I've already touched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blowing it. Please do, please do. Is there an etiquette? Like, yeah. may I? Yeah, you're only supposed to put your finger in the back loop, right? Well, that's, well for that, me, that's all. like, I, you know, I don't think that, for, I'm not too, I'm like, whatever. You're like, not too precious? No, but when touching other people's shoes, I'm conscious of like the oils in my fingers. Oh. And like when it's a, like this shoe doesn't really have any like super delicate material on That's it. That's a but, subtle way of saying you've already violated the code link. <laughs> but if it was like a suede, I, I'm kind of just really particular about like, okay, oils might transfer onto the suede, so I'm just gonna hold it from the midsole. Mm. It's like when you go to a hat shop, like uh, you know, I, I I will buy the occasional fedora from Are you like ta- Goren Brothers, and I what is that? You talking about lids? No, no, no. I'm talking about like Goren Brothers, like the the like the hat hat shop. 
you know, there's one in Pasadena. There's, there's, you know about Gordon, like a cowboy I, hat. And so, no, like the fedoras are the okay, those okay. that I wear. So, I go in there, and for the longest time, I went in there, and I was grabbing the hat on top of the hat and picking it up and moving it around. And then, like the fifth time I was in the store, I saw a sign that says, "Please do not handle hats from the crown." Crown. You're supposed to take the 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 brim and hold everything from the brim. So. What's the so you basically the yeah. the equivalent of a brim of a hat is the sole of the shoe. I don't know if that's etiquette mm. though. That's just sort of my personal thing. But I you know but you have the power to create etiquette. <laughs> I don't that's know. That's the about beauty that. of it. I don't know about that. But. but you did help create the way people think about the cleanliness of their sneakers. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think like having clean sneakers is just sort of goes hand in hand with being sort of into sneakers. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't create that. I think what I created was um, in some ways, I it wasn't to make shoe cleaning cool. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I guess, I guess it just kind of became that mm -hmm. as well. I mean, I, what I wanted to do was uh, create a shoe cleaner that was made specifically for like the sneaker culture and sneaker market. Yeah, and you're talking about a cleaning product. Cleaning product, yeah. So just bring me up to speed so what it what is it you do what what's the what's the breadth of what your company does at this point you so, cl you clean shoes you got a product that cleans the shoes with you right. like what yeah, are all the yeah, yeah. what are all the facets of the business here so it started uh 10 years ago and it started with a shoe cleaner and that's it like i had a shoe care a shoe cleaner kit it had like a 8 ounce bottle of of cleaner and it came with a brush and i had uh, because that did not exist. No, well, shoe cleaner existed. It uh -huh. was just more of like mass market stuff, like stuff that you would just find in the mall. Mm -hmm. And like uh, you bought your shoes at Foot Locker. Yeah. And then at the at the cashier's like, hey, why don't you I, let let me just give you a fails. little exactly yeah a yeah. little squirt bottle of this stuff. Right. Yeah. So that stuff existed. Um, I've tried it, and I'm sure you know a, a lot of people have. But for me. I just personally didn't trust that stuff because it was a you know aerosol can. It had this like spiky uh, uh, cap. Lit cap that yeah. acted as a was supposed, to, supposed to be a brush, and mm -hmm. it was these sharp like I don't know if you guys remember this, but it yes. was like super sharp bristles. So like yeah, yeah. I just never. I mean, I've used it before back in the day, but I usually resorted to just kind of making my own stuff at home. You want your shoe back? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> that that's a clean shoe. That is a sweet well, shoe. You know, so I just it, thought of you sitting there with one sock on. I was like, we can't have a we can't keep talking to Jason Mark. You got one shoe on. Give the man his shoe. Back. I kind of <laughs> hope you forget about it. I can keep one of his shoes. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you blew it, man. You would remember when he started walking. I was about to grab it and slowly start inching it to my side of the table. Uh, I would have noticed. He would have noticed. I would proudly wear one shoe if it was that shoe. Yeah. Okay. So we should have discussed that ahead of time. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the existing product was inadequate. Well, I mean, yeah, I just. Well, it was scary. It, it looked was, like a porcupine on it was top. Dangerous. Right. It's you just, spend hundreds of dollars on a right. shoe. This is like a prized possession. And right. They throw in this thing in your bag, look like a, a polyurethane porcupine. That feels right. like an upsell. You yeah, know? it feels like it, an upsell. Definitely. Anyway. And then, yeah, you know, I remember the bristles used to break off, and it was just wasn't the best product. Um, but I think, for me at least, the biggest thing was like sort of a dis like not trusting what's in there. Mm -hmm. So I just I just go home and make my own like dishwashing soap, um, warm water. Sometimes I'd mix like, if it was like, for like to clean my laces, if they were white laces, I'd put them in like a, like a little Ziploc bag with like warm water, some dishwashing soap and some bleach. And I'd shake it up and they get really bright white. Uh -huh. But the thing is like after one, after you put your laces back in, the bleach would have weakened the, right. the, the lace and it would just like, it's like, like hair. It just, yeah, it would just, so there's certain things that like, there's certain tricks, you know, that everybody has, and um, so you were. Uh, so this is talking ten years ago when you you wanted this for yourself. You were yeah. were you a, a self self ascribed sneakerhead uh, at I mean, the time? I, I, yeah, I was in the sneakers for you sure. You had like I, a, a vast collection back then. Uh, I I had a a good amount of shoes. You know, I'm I'm not like a. I still don't consider myself like a collector per okay. se. Like I just always been in the shoes. I. Everything that I buy, I wear. I mean, yeah. it's not like I 
like flip them or mm -hmm. buy multiple pairs. And I have this like, I now I have a sneaker room now, but like I just used to have like boxes. Right. You know, it wasn't anything like thousands of pairs. Right. Well, and the funny thing is, is you know, I think about like the way that we approached shoes growing up, you know, like we, we grew up together and especially as a kid, I think I didn't understand the whole sneakerhead thing until uh, I became an adult because as kids, what we would do is you'd get a new pair of shoes and then you would just wear it indiscriminately everywhere oh, and yeah. it just got so dirty mm -hmm. and you just knew how long you had the shoes by how dirty the shoes were. But like when you played basketball, even in middle school, I, re I remember, I wasn't on the team, I kept score for the girls. Right. And they didn't were, give me shoes you, you for that. You were close by. You did not need any Scorekeeper shoes. specific type of shoes for that You could have had on role. slippers. Yeah, I could have been barefoot, man. <laughs> Um, which is good for your feet, I'm told. Yeah, well, no, don't say that. Maybe, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not you true. You clean your feet. I clean them. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta have shoes. <laughs> but I remember those first tennis shoes, not tennis shoes, basketball shoes that you had. Do You didn't wear those out when you were off the court, did you? I did, I did. Just like running so, through the fields so and stuff? Now, first of all, my my son knew about you, had bought your kit because he's a sneakerhead in my mm. family. And he's also, he's a basketball player uh, now. He's, he's gone from diving to basketball. And so he's got his shoe collection and he has his court shoes. And, he, and I was telling him the other day, I was like, you realize that our coach would, first of all, everybody on the team got the same shoes. So now it's like everybody, every player gets their own shoes. And that's not, not something that's happened in the NBA, but now it happens in college. And it also happens in high school now. Where, but we had the team shoe, like everybody, like the year the pumps came out, mm -hmm. we bought pumps. Our whole team got the pumps. That was big. Good but shoot. I <laughs> would wear those pumps, not only would I wear them to school, I would wear them when I played street ball in my front yard on my street on the like the really rough gravel. Mm. And I and then I would wonder why when I was in the game I had no traction at all. You'd be sliding around like air hockey. And it's like it I don't know why no one told us how we should think about things. Like why didn't somebody why didn't my coach just say you guys shouldn't wear these shoes anywhere but this court because you need the traction that they were designed to have. It's like Locke, it just blew his mind that that was something that we did. But we just, the shoe, we didn't understand shoes. You know, honestly, like I'd wear my shoes on the black court when I'd play in the gym. It was one of those things where it was just like, I wasn't broke, but I didn't have all the money in the world to buy like all the shoes that I wanted to buy. So I just- right wear them and try to keep them clean as possible. Right. Which actually made it more important to keep your shoe. Right, yeah. You know, it's, they would get dirtier mm -hmm. and you wanted to look, you weren't just gonna go out and buy another right. pair and another could, pair, yeah. you're gonna get them clean. Right. So were you always like meticulously cleaning and trying to figure that out? Yeah, I mean, I think just my personality is, I'm, I'm a little bit of a clean freak, mm -hmm. you know, just uh, even outside of shoes. You Me know? too. You do? Yeah. We're, a bit, I'm a bit OCD. See, but you're not a sh shoe clean freak. I'm not a, sh no, but I, but in many things. Because I like, think that most people think of it like, okay, if I, get, if I got a shirt and it's got like a mustard stain on it, I'm like, mm, I can't wear that. But then for some reason they believe that that rule stops at the ankle, right? And they're like, well, I got a weird grass stain on my shoe, but. Well, but it's, that, but it's a so, lot more pricey. But ex explain, I wanna I just help people understand the mentality behind seeing the cleanliness of shoes as being as important as the cleanliness of your shirt. Absolutely, I mean, I think the uh, the, the reason why, like, to, just to go back, like when I created the logo, the original logo has a speech bubble in it. I don't know if you've seen it, but it has a speech bubble. Mm -hmm. And the whole thought behind that was like, your sneakers are, a, are, are an expression, a statement. Like you basically, you don't have to say anything. And it's sort of like, you look at the person's shoes and you're like, okay, like, what's up? You know, like, yeah, I know, uh -huh. I know, you know, it's like, game recognized game type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so keeping your sneakers clean, like you couldn't just walk out the house with busted sneakers because it, <laughs> it just, it it's completes your whole outfit. Right. What you're wearing, so. Um, and was that something that. You don't want to look like a hobo from the ankle right. down. Man. No. Like, so like your group of friends, were you, was it something that like everybody understood this, don't go out of the house with busted shoes or was this something that you kind of brought to you, no, it was sort of like amongst my peers, yeah, like that were in the shoes. You kept them clean as possible, as much as possible. And um, I think, you know, I'll, but the big thing with me was like growing up was playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I was going to be 
the first Asian like pro player, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> which like seeing were you uh, <laughs> far from it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was so good, you know. I thought I was so good, and I really was not that good, you know. I was like in the eighth grade. I remember just like playing and just dribbling circles around like my teammates and just doing no look passes and everything. And I get to high school, and I remember trying out for the the freshman basketball team, and I was just like, it was just like a huge awakening that I really was not that good. I, <laughs> I tried out, I went to summer, uh, whatever summer camp and then I didn't make the team. And then I tried out again for the sophomore team. I didn't make the team and it was like, okay, you really, you really not that good. Ooh, <laughs> but you can look good. <laughs> yeah. It was just, I mean, yeah, it was just fun. It was, it was, it was, you know, that was a big part of growing up with playing ball. Yeah. Well, that, I mean, that's what, that's what got in both, actually both of our kids are more in the shoes. Mm -hmm. than we are, that's what got them in the shoes is that uh, we started taking them to, uh, like my my kids were not in, into basketball at all, which mm -hmm. was my sport growing up. Because like I said, Locke was into diving. There's no shoes for diving. <laughs> There's just a little Speedo, it's kind of embarrassing to wear. Mm. And uh, Keep it clean though. But taking him to cl uh, Clippers games, I know you're a Lakers fan. Yeah. Clippers fan, we just, we won't even talk about. It. We won't even talk. We won't. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. That's all. You already brought it up. <laughs> and because of that, our boys got into they started, basketball. Yeah, they got into basketball, which leads you well, into shoes. Real fast. It was fast. actually right. getting an Xbox, and then they got two K NBA two K. Yeah, which they started playing it, the video game, and then you get, and then we started going to basket NBA games but here. You, but you start to see how all, the, all how all the businesses are so related, right? It's like, oh, gonna get you into this this game. And then you're gonna want to understand how to win the game because the game is so realistic. Mm. Actually, watching basketball happen is gonna help you play the game better. Oh, yeah. I'm actually interested in this. What are these guys into? Oh, they're really into their shoes. They all have. And now I'm into shoes. So now yeah. Locke has. I had to install these like two shelves next to his bed where he's got you know all his shoes. And then like then we had an, we had an agreement. I was like, when you beat me in horse. I'll buy you a pair of shoes, and that finally happened like two months ago. So then I had to buy him a pair of shoes. So what, it's like, what'd you get him? What did he end up? He, actually, he went with us to. Um, he couldn't. He couldn't to, pick to, out to a riff, pair to Riff LA. Oh, okay, and uh, he couldn't pick out a pair. But then he got stage fright. Oh, you was, know what he did? He got um, much to my disappointment. He got the Duke themed Kyrie's, and I'm mm. an NC State grad, mm. and my wife is a UNC grad, and he got the Duke themed Kyrie's. <laughs> Are they called the Flat Earthers? <laughs> No, but that'd be good. That'd be be good. good. It's got yeah, like, it's a, like squished it's got like, earths. Yeah, no, you look, you you raise up the bottom, and it's got like a map on the. It's got the earth on the it bottom because it's flat. As it actually is. That's good. We, I, I incidentally, I tweet at Kyrie a lot. Uh, whenever I see like a NASA video that shows the roundness of the Earth, I just at him just to remind him that it is round. <laughs> and what that, does he that, say my, back? He doesn't say anything back. Oh, he doesn't. No, Kyrie has not responded. Well, he's busy. He's got some you know? awesome shoes though. <laughs> That's got some great handles on, too. That's what we play ball every Wednesday, and that's what I that's what I run in the Kyrie Three. Yeah. yeah, there's three pairs at our house. My eight year old has a pair that he plays in in his basketball league. Then my and then Locke has two pair. But how did it go from you, you wanted to formulate your own cleaner just for yourself, or was it immediately a business so, idea? Well, I've always been sort of like business minded. I've always wanted to be my own boss. Um, I've written like business plans that never really panned out. And I was cleaning my sneakers one night and I was using my homemade concoction or whatever. And it was like, I told you it was like a mix of OxyClean, dishwashing soap and warm water and like a toothbrush. And I was cleaning my shoes and I was like, like that was sort of like the, the first aha moment. Like mm -hmm. there's gotta be, like I'm using household cleaners to like mm -hmm. clean my shoes. There's gotta be a better way so I didn't know if like I wasn't aware of something existing, um, right? Specialized for the sneaker market, so I just or if you were on to something, right? Yeah, so I did. I, I uh, you know jumped around the internet, didn't really see anything that was like special. I I go to like um, sneaker lineups and to my local sneaker shop at the time I was living in Harbor City, so proper in Long Beach was like my spot, and um, I'd go down there and just ask people like, what do you, hey, what do you use to clean your sneakers and everybody had a recommendation. It wasn't like, oh, go use XYZ product. It uh -huh. was like, take a white tip eraser, do the, <laughs> use a Tide pen. Oh, you know, if you do this and you kind of, you mix that with this. And that's when I was sort of like, okay, there's something here now. And um, right. so that was sort of the real aha moment. Um, yeah. So 
what was the next step? So then, come up with come up with a name or come up with a no, formula. No, the formula. Oh, yeah. So, so I'm not a, I'm not a chemist. You know, I I so the first once I knew I had like the opportunity and idea there of what I wanted to create, I started googling chemist. Like, <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. A really. chemist in my neighborhood, like, like you like, wanted to show like up. Local, first of all, you like, yelped to chemist. First, no, chemist no, no. was ten years ago. No, probably. it was like chemist Los Angeles, and then in, you know the language was like contract manufacturing. I was like, okay, contract chemist, and so like I would just, you know, that's where I had met like my main chemist. But I went through uh, two two chemists before landing on him, and being like, okay, he gets it, you know. Hmm. Well, how yeah. hard is it to get? Make uh, something really good well, to clean see, shoes. So that's the thing. That's the thing is like you would, it, you know. So the first guy that I had called said, "Yeah, come down, or whatever." And I was trying to explain to him exactly what I wanted to do, my vision. Like, uh, you know, the first priority for me was making it safe, so people don't even have to think twice. Like, oh, I gotta clean my sneakers. I'm just gonna go grab that product and use it. I might eat my sneaker later. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it was just that was the first thing, and the guy was like, "Yeah, shoe cleaner, I can make you shoe cleaner all day. Like we could, we could do, you could do your logo here." It was just he wasn't really trying to hear me out, you know. I got you. Um, and then the same with the second guy, and then the third guy who um, I ended up going with. I remember I called him. I was working my full time job. I was working in advertising, and I called him on my lunch break, and we talked for like an hour and a half, and I was just just talking about the vision and what I what I wanted to do and how important it was that it didn't, you know, damage suede or that it didn't turn the shoe yellow. And I was trying to explain to him, there's so many different grades of suede and hmm. there's patent leather. And he's like, what's patent leather? And like, so uh -oh, like- Oh, red flag. Yeah, so it was just, you know, I, I, I after speaking to him for like an hour and a half, I set up a meeting and I remember I brought, it, I brought in like five or six different pairs of shoes. And we sat in his office and it was just like, educating him on like materials, mm. which was which, which is a trip. The next step was I went out and bought like every shoe care product that I can find that was on the market that I did some that I didn't even use. It was just like, like, here you go. Here's what's on the market. And here's like my vision and direction. And this is what I want to create. And it was just off to the races from there. And then how like, long did it take to develop uh, the secret formula? Uh, it took about, I want to say less than six months. It wasn't. It okay. was a lot of testing. Like he'd <clears throat> he'd he'd give me like three or four different samples to take home, and then I'd go test them, and then I'd write my notes and feedback. Like, oh, you know, I wanted it to foam b more. Right. It doesn't clean that well on you know rubber or um, vulcanized soles or different types of things. And I write it back and I would give him the feedback, and then like another two three weeks later, he'd be like, oh, I got some more samples from you. Come come pick them up. And then once you had what you had decided was you know, the final formula, like what was the transition from quitting your day job to kind of chasing this dream? Once I had the formula, um, I that, that, that's when the fun stuff, like it was the formula and then it was like picking the color and picking the smell and then like. And then what, what's it, what was it called or what's it, was, what's it's, it called? It's called now? Jason Mark. It's my okay. first and middle name. But it, so that was all like the like, I, I, I'm pretty creative minded. So like that was where I like fit. Like I was like, oh, okay, now I could, mm -hmm. I could call it this. And I you had some really advertising mind. Yeah. Just like, it was just, I felt, uh, you know, that was like my zone, you know? So like the well, brand. There's, there's very few things that are as satisfying as like, if, if you've got an advertising mind, taking that and applying it to something that you're trying to, to yeah. sell, like it, it, as opposed to like taking all the energy and trying to sell somebody else's product that you may not believe in. Right, or right. Or something different about yeah. that. I think, um, I don't know that, yeah, exactly. Just that it was mine, you know? Like I, I really took the time to like really think it through and I had some cheesy names um, and- Like what, you remember? Uh, I think the one- Jason, that, no more marks. <laughs> oh, that's good, no more marks. Yeah. I, I think the, the one that was like the front winner, which I think back now is really cheesy, but I was gonna call it sneak peek shoe cleaner, like like sneaker, like sneak and like peak, like a mountain, like oh. keep them in peak condition. Sneak oh, peak. Sneak peak. Sneak peak. It's not that bad. I mean. But I mean. 
Yeah, I remember. You so could have like a creepy dude looking over a fence. <laughs> nope, that's but that's using wrong. The, using the name though, it almost makes it it makes it seem like a premium product in some way, right? It yeah. doesn't seem like a gimmick product. No, I, no, it doesn't. It. it doesn't. And, and the, the I remember the exact like morning where it kind of like dawned on me, like, oh, use your name was um. I was brushing my teeth and I, I go to open the me medicine with cabinet. With it? With the product? No, not the not with the product. <laughs> I've actually <laughs> tasted the product. Um, you have any? I'd love to taste yeah. it right now. <laughs> it's not very good tasting. At <laughs> well, I would not recommend it. It probably, it <laughs> but, probably tastes great compared to some of the stuff we've been fed yeah, around here. Yeah, that's true. Oh <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I opened the medicine cabinet and I had a Paul Smith um, like bottle of lotion or face cream or something. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, Paul Smith. That's mm -hmm. the designer's name. You know, like that's pretty like, uh, timeless, I guess. Like it yeah. doesn't, it's not trendy. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna call it. I'm call it my, my middle name is Mark, but it's spelled with one K. And um, the reason I added the extra K was uh, I wanted it to be kind of easy to search. Like mm -hmm. I don't know how many Jason Mark with one K there yeah. are in the world, but with two Ks, probably not that many. Yeah, it's important, man. Yeah, it's important that keyword thing. Gotta SEO. Got to keep googling. Got to get that yeah. SEO going. So you had that. And you're you, you know you're working on all of your all your marketing mm -hmm. mojo, but then but then you've got to like, I mean you've got like a uh, like a nest egg that you're put you're investing into no. manufacturing or something. No, I I like to raise money. I this was 2000. I launched the company in 2007, and the development and all that was like 2006. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember I put together like this PowerPoint deck, and I invited my family over <laughs> i was li i was living with my parents but i invited, so you like, invited my, them into I, the living room yeah, <laughs> you guys <laughs> come <laughs> over <laughs> my i had like like you know my favorite auntie and like my sisters and her, and their husbands and, um and we had dinner i cooked remember i cooked dinner for them oh yeah you they, knew, they knew something was up you know it was just <laughs> weird why are you getting us drunk <laughs> and, and then um i remember like busting out my laptop and like walking them through my presentation <laughs> and I raised like, I don't know, like $15,000. Like my my sister would give me like five, my parents gave me like, like whatever. I remember it amounted to like under 20 and that's what I had to work with. That's to like, awesome. For like though. website and like like production run, like the first production run. Um, well, if you, you know, if, if you believe in something that you're doing and uh, you can convince the people that love you and have the means to support it, to support it, I, that's. Yeah, I mean, I believed in it, do it for sure. And I just figured. What um, are they gonna do, defamily you? Yeah. yeah. I think that's called disown. No more PowerPoints. Yeah, yeah they're gonna ban you from PowerPoints in the living room. Yeah, it didn't so, happen. No, it didn't happen. They supported me and they still, they still do very much support, yeah. So you made your first batch. Right. Or you had it made. I had it made, and then um, I mean, what, what well, what's this? I mean, what's the strategy? How does this thing so, get from? Yeah, so I think the first production run, the minimum was like twenty five hundred units or something like that, if I remember correctly. And um, back when when I launched, it was packaged in this like mini sneaker box, and um, I remember uh, I, I had a like a like a filling pizza party like at my sister's house uh -huh. and I got pictures of somewhere but it was just like you know three three or four six foot tables and um, it was literally like me fi us filling bottles by hand we had those you know those Gatorade like um uh you know those orange Gatorade like uh you, that soccer games yeah like, like a cooler yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we go to Home Depot and I remember I got two of those and I got like a piece of rubber hose that would like go onto the spigot Mm -hmm. And um, it would just prevent like foam. So you just put the, the hose in the bottle and you'd like fill each one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had like a filling party. We had like an assembly line of people making like mini sneaker boxes. I ordered pizza and um, and it was it was it was fun. It was fun. You know, it took it took uh, back in the day it used to take me like a twenty five hundred unit run would last me like a whole year. <laughs> Which and you would and sell it out of your they, house, or no, you'd sell so, it sell it out of so, like the sneaker shops. No, I, I so basically what I did um, before I even quit my job, I think going back to that question was, um, I had the product, but I didn't launch it officially, and I I felt like I might need to have some sales skills. So like my my younger brother at the time he was selling kitchen cutlery. You know, like one of those when you go to like campuses and people hand you like those flyers, and it's like yo 
mm-hmm. like need a job. Door and to door knife sales. Yeah, like, like literally Cutco. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out we, Cutco. Yeah, we've had a cu- couple of Cutco situations. I still use Cutco because that guy t- Joey came to my house, man. Joey came to my house, man. selling me Cutco. I, I, I thought used he was going to cut me. <laughs> I, no, I, I that was him, his tactic. I've he, had him for sixteen years. I had him sharpened last year. Yeah. Well, Joey would break out the knife and like. He would threaten you with it. That's how. He, that's how well, I bought no, the whole freaking set. He had that thing that the clincher moment in the presentation where he would cut a penny with that that's those the scissors one. <laughs> to get you. Where he would and hit I was the like, couch. I'm gonna get the scissors. <laughs> how am I gonna cut my pennies <laughs> if I don't get the scissors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta cut those pennies. That, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So so I, yeah, I, I basically quit my uh, advertising job, and then I. But you got your you, you got your brother was a knife salesman. He you got him to be a he he was a salesman and he had his own like office in Torrance. Like oh, he had his own. He was selling, running his own thing. Selling lots of knives. He yeah. had people selling selling for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I saw his I saw his sales manual one day and I was just like flipping through it. And it was like the it was like the ABCs of selling, like how to handle yeah um, objections and all that. And I was like, this is this is really good stuff. You know, like I might need I. It helps when you have a sharp knife. That's step one. <laughs> yeah, with the handling objections. Yeah, yeah just uh, I was like, "Yo, like, I want to learn how to sell." So I he hired me. It was funny. I had to go through this whole interview process, and like, I was, you know, he hired me for a summer, and I oh, sold. Oh, you didn't hire your brother? No, he you, hired. You me. asked him to hire you yeah. so you could learn. And he had me. It wasn't just like you, like <laughs> you got the job. It was like I remember sitting in the. It was like this bungalow. It was it was like and it, and it, it was like three people ahead of me, and they were all like for in, there for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like my brother, dude, like just hire me. Like what do you? But I, I had to go. Through. A penny, man. <laughs> so you sold knives to learn how to sell. Yeah, sheep yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just never. Well, I get maybe I did use some of the knowledge that I picked up, but um, yeah. So I sold knives for a summer. I, I almost sold like thirty thousand dollars worth of knives, and I was like, at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done. Like. <laughs> I'm good. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm pretty good. Like, I don't need to like, uh, you know, so I quit. It was only like, I was only there for like three, three months, three, four months. Mm-hmm. And then um, I, okay, so I had the product. And then uh, before I quit, before I quit my job at the advertising agency, I like hit up all my homies that were like in the creative departments, like the designers. And I was just like, yo, I'm going to quit um, in like two weeks. Would you help me like design logos and stuff? And they're like, yeah. So like, um, I just kind of like built a team there before I left, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then um and then yeah. So they I had the logo, I had the name, I had the packaging. They and and actually the guy that uh, is that is my main creative director today is is the guy who designed my logo ten years ago. Oh wow! You got him. He came. Yeah. With so he's eventually. been on the whole. He's seen the whole thing from. He designed the logo, and he's designed like every piece of packaging that we have we've done in the last ten years. And, he's, and it, and at this point, it's moved w- well beyond the selling the individual uh, well, packs, right? Well, I, mean, I did. Like, I didn't even. I. I. So I didn't even launch yet. Um, but what I did was I created like a. I, I knew how to create a press kit, like from, uh, like advertising or whatnot. And mm-hmm. well, my best friend was like a graphic designer, and I remember. Um, so basically, like a which is a swag box that you send to people yeah. who can like. Talk about how great it is. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Write articles or, and stuff for. Yeah, and you had to like have, uh, you know, pretty good quality pictures, all that stuff. So I remember we shot the pictures in his garage and had like IKEA lights and um, I gotta find the originals, but they were so photoshopped because like the lighting was bad and yeah. the shadows and but it worked. So I put I put all this stuff into like a a, a press packet and I just remember um, this was 2007. I remember hitting up like all the blogs. Uh, it was like hype beast. It was slam hype. Um, uh, Mr. Kim says it was like the Jeff Staples of the world and those mm-hmm. guys that had blogs and uh, I just would hit them up. Like those are the, sneaker heads. Those are like just like yeah, sneaker like street streetwear okay. blogs. And I would just like email the info line and like, hey, my name is Jason. I'm starting this company. I have this product. Like, can I send you out a kit? And so a lot of them were like, yeah. And then back in back when it was like easy. It was like yeah. And before they even got it, it was like, oh, we'll we'll post it. I sent them the email, the thing, and then they're, we'll post it on this date at this time. And I'm like, holy, shit, like this is super cool. And they did. Like they really just so when it launched, um, I was prepared to go door to door. Like if I had it, to, if I had to, like go door to door. And uh, when it launched, it got on all the blogs and. Um, I got all I got tons of emails like from around the world mm-hmm. like instantly it was like global um, 
and I didn't even have a website. I had a splash page with like, uh, you had a logo and you click it and it would open like a, like an info, like a email info at jasonmark.com and you Ooh. would just like type. So like, I remember it launched and like- So you couldn't take people's money. Mm -mm. And, and I, I didn't have- Just a, emails. And it <laughs> was funny. Those just, fun. just emails. And I would, I would be processing these orders like via email. Like how many kits did you want? And that's gonna be $25. And then I was like, the sh I was the customer service guy. I was the shipping guy, I was everything. And their pen pal. Potentially. Uh, yeah, pen, pen, their pen pal. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so it was crazy. It was like, you know, I was in the South Bay, Southern Southern California, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna launch it here, and I'll probably have to drive up to San Francisco. Just thinking about like accessible cities, maybe San Diego, and just if I had to go hustle. And I never, thank God, never really had to go like door to door. It was just uh, stores from around the world saying, I wanna carry your product. Right. And this, there was no product out there yet. Yeah. It was just based off of, I guess, the branding, packaging, and, you know, the press kit, I guess, and all the press that it got. At what point, didn't, at some point you expanded to where there was actual cleaning service, right? I mean, yeah, when so did that come along? That was uh, about three years ago. So yeah, the company- Yeah, how did, how did okay, that? So six, so six like, years after your launch, six or seven yeah, years. Yeah, seven years. You expanded. Seven years and um, it was, we, I wanted to open a, a store, like a physical store. Cause we, we had a pretty good loyal following on social media and people would like follow us and like do all that. But I just felt like it was this, I remember, I remember how the store came up cause I was doing a trade show in Vegas. It, it was like Agenda or um, might've been Magic or one of the ones. And I remember we had a great show. And I remember sitting there and I was sitting there with my marketing guy. Now like for the trade show, are you like, you got one of those microphones and you're like, all right, step right up, can me your shoes. I can make any shoes clean, see? <laughs> no, no, because that's that not very cool. That's not cool. That's <laughs> no. not, I don't think that would you're work. You're not gonna get the right clientele doing yeah, that. We, we that's got, for old ladies. They gave us like a free booth. Old ladies right. got <laughs> money. Old money's worth just as much old as new money. Old ladies got old dirty shoes. <laughs> Different yeah. type of trade show. Yeah, different All type right. of, yeah, we just, we had a booth and it was just such a great reception and uh, and I was just like, what do we do now? And for some reason it was like, well, let's open a store. Like that's the next, I think that's the next thing to do is open a store. And, and had you expanded the product offerings beyond that initial kit or? It, not really, I mean, I I remember for like the first five or six, seven years, we, we literally had like five SKUs and I and I just, we had the, we had like, the, we had the, we had the towel, we had two brushes, we had the cleaner, and I think we we did like a handful of collabs at that point mm -hmm. with like really like cool sneaker shops, um, like Undefeated that was the first one that we did, and then we did uh, Nort uh, that was in a New York based sneaker boutique, and then we did Staple Design, and it was just like collabs were, and we still do several collabs now. So like, give me an example, like what kind of product is it? It was just like, um, I remember it, like the first undefeated one, uh, they we basically just took the, the kit. It was a, it was an eight ounce bottle and a brush in a little mini sneaker box. And they just like, they just flipped everything right, about okay. it. So like the packaging and the pattern and the color of the bottle and the scent and the labels and, we just did like a limited run of like a thousand pieces, mm. and um, and then from there that kind of just like we're off off and running. Right. It in a it in and of itself became a collector's item. Yeah, when you would limited do that. limited edition cool. stuff, and um, yeah, this was two thousand seven. But then when you want to make a store, so, so say that's the next step. It was not just to sell the product, but also to to, well, to be it, it a started out an epicenter for a service. No, like it okay. the sto the concept for the store was simply to create a space where people can come and experience the Jason Mark brand, like past the computer. You know, it's just like, what are these guys into? What are they listening to? Like hmm. sights, smells, like okay. like let's talk sneakers and just but play. It was really really a place to buy product, and then like as I was designing the space out. We had this, uh, we call it the JM throne. It's like this old school uh, shoe shine chair. Um, and we had one of them and we got it made in Atlanta. And like, it was just, it was, it was like, uh, tra it was like being sent to different stores. We did a pop-up shop at Reed Space uh, where we had the chair and people would come and get free, we call them quick cleans. Mm -hmm. And then like, it was just gaining, uh, I guess popularity. We would, uh, okay, they saw it at Reed Space and they wanted it at wherever, you know, so this chair would just travel. And the experience 
um, that people would get was just like, I don't know if you've ever got your shoes clean before, but it is sort of like a, I don't know, it's a, it definitely is an experience. It just feels like, uh, I don't know, comforting. Yeah, I don't think, I've never, I've never had a, a shoe, shine. shoe shine or a uh, shoe clean, but I was told that it's like a, it feel, it's kind of like a massage. It is, it is it's very it's ther- a, therapeutic. It's like a spa th- yeah, right. therapy. Especially when you don't have a shoe on. Uh, mm. it's no. It's even more like well, a massage. Well, that's not. That is a massage. Oh, that's just a foot massage. <laughs> that's just a foot massage. With shoe polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's, that's, some, that's just, that's, that's something a we- different. That's I, a weird I, fetish. I probably shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> just a foot massage. Right, okay, but this is it, something that you offered. Yeah, so we were just doing, we are just doing these chair, like the chair tour, I guess, and then as we were designing the store, I'm like, okay, well, I want the chair, it's become sort of, you know, um, it goes hand in hand with the Jason Mark brand. I want the chair in the, in the in the front of the store. And then I was like, oh, well, why don't we just, do a service, and I, I I really underestimated it at that point. I didn't I didn't think I had this big like oh this is like the next thing like yeah it just was a just, cool idea yeah, it, it was, was just, just the next step in an evolution yeah. of what you were doing with it right it totally, people were resonating it totally with. makes sense though because in retrospect you've got people who like the idea of cleaning their shoes and then you like people then there's a much wider circle which is people who just like to have clean shoes. But like, you know what I'm saying? But like, am I gonna actually, especially like, you would probably like be like, okay, I'm gonna take this afternoon and I'm gonna clean these shoes and that's gonna be fun. And I would be like, ah, can I get somebody to do this? So that, that, I mean, that, it just totally makes sense to me that if you care about that, and especially if you know that you're not doing a good job Mm. and there's somebody who's a professional, that's the right product. But you had the chair in the store and it was still just like part of the experience of being there. It it wasn't a service yet. No, it was just sort of meant to be like the Instagram moment. Like, yeah. oh, I, I'm at the Jason Mark store, let me go sit in the JM throne and mm-hmm. like get my snap on, uh, my you know, my IG on. And mm-hmm. and that's what it was, the chair was there for. Um, and then we, I started thinking, I was like, oh, well, why don't we just do like some type of drop off cleaning service? And and I, I totally, again, just really underestimated the whole thing. And um, it's kind of grown into this thing where it's just like, I never would have thought, I just didn't even expect that like it would be what it is. Cause now. at this point you've got like celebrity clients who like, you're their yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, we, we've we had a, a, you know, we've had a fair amount of celebrities come in, a lot of basketball players. Um, we have, we've had DeAndre Jordan come in with Jordan Clarkson. Uh, we've had uh, Swaggy P come in, um, PJ Tucker, who's a big sneaker head. Um, we've had like hip hop artists, you know, we've had We've even had Ke- Ke- Kelly Rowland come in like, like two days in a row. <laughs> really? Yeah, that was. Did come unex- back from different well, you, shoes though. <laughs> different shoes. Not and, the same. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> I but, had a rough night. So, I'm back. <laughs> so, but the typical experience, if I were to go in there, I would drop them off and then come back and pick them up like a dry cleaner. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's just as simple as that. It's just. Um, so you got to take another pair of shoes to wear out, Link. Just planning ahead for you. Well, I would probably maybe carry them in a bag into you uh, and not you have to that. like change my shoes in there. Yeah, most people do that. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, a better strategy. Yeah, I'm just thought I'm of a that. strategic thinker. Yeah. yeah, so it's just this. It's just it's to put it simply, like that's how I explain it to people. Like it's dry. It's dry cleaning for sneakers. Are there are are the people in the back who are cleaning? Are they doing something different than I could do at home with your product? They, is it a special thing or is it the same they, thing? And it's they, just they 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 use it's the same product, but what it is is like they've come up with different techniques and methods on how technique. to treat. It's like it's serious. It's like a real. It's like a real thing. Like we I believe we, it. We we encourage people to like buy the product. Obviously, like go buy the product, do it at home. Um, but uh, a lot of times, people have that really special pair that me that has you know, right. whether whether it has a big you know, monetary value to it or a sentimental value. Um, and they they just don't wanna, they're just like, I don't wanna mess it up. I'd rather have you guys do it. And so we get that a lot. It, so I imagine that most people are bringing in their prized possession shoes. It, there, it's not like normal people just like, oh, I got these like nasty kids. No, we get, we get it, we get it all. That's the thing. And nasty I think- Nasty kids. <laughs> I, I think the, the part of the reason why Velcro. we- Velcro. No, we get it all. We get like, just like your basic whatever sneaker, and then we get we even get like the designer like Balenciagas, we get Saint Laurent, we get all the crazy like plus really rare like really rare sneakers as well, and then we just get we get everything. What's the what's the uh, 
most, it's something I learned and just going into Rift, because you're right, right down right, there. We're right across the street from Right Rift. across the street. Going down there with Locke and seeing like this special case with the, I think they had a $17,000 pair in there. What? At I one could, point. It was the it was those green. Um, oh yeah, the jo uh, undefeated fours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was. Oh no, no, it wasn't the undefeated fours. It was the uh, M and M fours. Yeah, and it was like a like I think it was like a size fourteen. It was apparently don't quote me on this, but apparently the only one in the world. I don't know. It was like really rare, um, but yeah, we we get stuff like that. Yeah, and so it, it, at that point, it seems like it's like uh, paint rest painting restoration, you know? Like you've got the lady who took that old picture of Jesus and made him look like an owl. Remember that from a couple of years ago? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? She like, cause uh, that's like, I, I, we actually, I knew a guy who. I know you just didn't owlify Jesus. <laughs> worked at a, a, a museum yeah. and uh, <laughs> specializes in paint, painting like restoration mm. and preservation. And of course, you know, they come in there and there's a million dollar painting and it's like you have to use the right chemicals and everything. It's it's a it's a slightly less expensive <laughs> version of that, but you are dealing with people's well, like babies. We are. And that's that's the sort of nerve wracking thing, like especially during the first year, because it was like I again underestimated the whole thing. But uh we just you know, we didn't realize how I didn't realize how um fulfilling it would be it was just i thought it was just like you know as a service that people may or may not use it goes hand in hand with the brand we offer a cleaning product mm -hmm. and um and we'll clean shoes and you know uh we'll use our product and it's just a it's a it's an icebreaker to like oh have you used our you know it's just a a thing and um but it became but, fulfilling when it, someone what, hands you their baby right and, and then it seeing, comes back. The, seeing the reaction was the craziest uh craziest thing but then there's also like you got people in tears like you gave me my right. Jordans back and they, they look beautiful. We had um we we had one customer who was who actually was brought to tears like an ice. <laughs> uh, it was it was I love it. it was uh it was a pair of eighty five Air Jordan ones, OG and I guess they were in a um they were her dad's and it was like in a she found them in a shack or like backyard mm -hmm. shack and they were like beat up super beat up. Um, and it was Father Father's Day was was coming up, and she asked us to to re, you know bring them back. And um, I remember this was like maybe six months of being open or something. So I had told it wasn't even it's not even about like churning out shoes. Like I told my staff like just make sure the customer is happy. That's it. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Like we're supposed to be spending a certain amount of time on a certain service. You know that's a business. Like you're making yeah. a certain margin and. All that, I just threw that all out the window, like especially for the first year. Like I just want you to focus on doing a great job. I don't care if you take two hours to clean the pair of shoes, like I don't care. Mm -hmm. um, and they did and they they brought these uh, this these Jordans back and she had come to pick them up and she was literally like like brought to tears. And that, that I was, I had just happened to be there. <laughs> like, oh, man. like behind the, the, we have this cubby system where the shoes and I just happened to be kind of like watching. Like from the, I was like, holy. You're like, this is all worth it. Can you game. imagine how the, how much the dad bawled? Yep. I bet he was in tears Pro too. Probably. And like my guys, they're just like, yeah, you should. So you should go buy this acrylic case and like giving her tips on like how to present it to him. Uh -huh. Are there people who bring in? Maybe it's a kid, or maybe it's a high dollar. You stuck like, on kids, man, man. I just. Do you have a pair of kids? I really step. I love kids. I stepped in something bad and I stepped all the way in it. Like, like stepped in some dookie? So we, yeah. We've just like, dookie how steps. bad does it get? The, That's at least $12. The, the, the worst <laughs> pair of shoes we've ever gotten uh, were a pair of Bapes and they were covered in blood. What? Soaked in blood. Like real blood? Yeah, real blood. And- uh, Blood from a what? My bo so, so he he had a Fourth of July accident and he like almost blew off his hand. Oh, and he was a friend. What? He was a friend. Like uh, firework mishap. Yeah, yeah. And I saw that. I met the guy. So he's a he was a friend of uh, my main guy that was kind of like running. Uh, we call him the, the sneaker care technicians. Is something that we came up with or S for short SCT. And he was like my lead SCT. And he was like, oh, I got this homie, and he's got these pair of babes and they're bloody and like. <laughs> I want to I want to bring them in and I want to like I want to do before and after, and I'm like what what like how what, what like is it evidence like <laughs> before very bloody no he's like no, is no, it no. evidence he was like that's no, a no. good question yeah it's like you know so he's like no no my friend he had an accident I'll introduce I'll intro you and stuff so 
I remember he came to the shop and I, you know I, I met the dude and it was it was like it was th- his thumb was, his hand was still kind of swollen like it had healed okay mm. but it was like you could tell something like right had, had happened. blown up in there yeah yeah so light it throw it mm-hmm. or set it down then light it then run away mm-hmm. yeah, don't or don't purchase at all mm. or light or throw you talking about saying. fireworks? I'm talking about fireworks Got now. It. Right. <laughs> but who am I? Who who am I to say? What I've a, done a lot of stupid stuff in my life. So so did did you did you go for it? Did you yeah, say yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They we I was like, okay, well, as long as they're not like, you know, again, like evidence or some crazy <laughs> that we right, shouldn't yeah. be mixed up in. <laughs> uh <laughs> okay. Yeah, I met the dude, I was like, all right. And I was like, just make sure you wear like protective you know gloves yeah, and some gloves. make sure you're like all covered up and and, yeah, and they did and it was just like they brought the pair back. i looked brand new honestly <laughs> and it, luckily it was like it was a it wasn't like i don't think the shoe had any suede on it or anything like anything absorbed, right, so but, it was, but, it, but it was but it was but the sock liner and everything had it wasn't just like on the outside of the shoe it was like what does so- he do clean himself up with his shoes <laughs> it oh, was yeah, 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 yeah desperate was, times <laughs> yeah i'm gonna stick my hand in my shoe like it's a glove and now i'm gonna do it with the other one and what oh. about st- stanky shoes like how often is it like this is an awesome yeah. pair of shoes but the real problem is the stink foot. Yeah, we we get a lot of those. Um, and what and, and do you have like a powder? Uh, it, are, are you? Yeah, we um, we do a combination of things. Like if it, I have if it's really bad. Asking for a friend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if it's really bad, um, like we've even stuck them in the freezer oh. overnight to kind of kill all the bacteria. Yeah. Um, and we we currently use um. It's like this antibacterial, like it's pretty, it's this brand called Rita and they're out of Japan. And it's this kind of really like elevated fragrance company that makes a, a, like a shoe spray. So that's what we use. But it, so if you're, if you got the stanky kids, you, <laughs> you can put them in the freezer. You can. And it will, that yeah. makes total sense. Yeah, it's probably not. I mean, that's what we used to do like in our first year. Um, now it's just like really giving it a thorough clean, like really taking out the the insole and really giving the whole inside and you know giving it a good spray if mm. i may oh <laughs> i'm wondering this is my shoe mm. i just took it off my right foot i would like for you to just i'll give it a left one too i mean <laughs> just assess what what i mean it's what, what does this say about me that i'm wearing these shoes and b- based on you know profile me and profile. then profile the shoe Tell me everything you know about me and the shoe based on this. I mean, as far as I mean, it's a pretty, it's a, it's a dope shoe. I mean, it's a, uh, what are these the, are these the tra- bow? I don't even know exactly what. He I don't knows know though. He knows though. Oh, I know. Like, I know they're bonos. Tra- I know bonos. I know they're a trainer. Um, they're in pretty relatively good shape. Pretty relatively. Um, pretty really. Pretty pretty relatively good shape. Yeah. Um, that means not great, Link. I don't know too much about him. All I know is I watched that documentary Sneakerheads. Yeah. And in the middle of it, I said, I, I turned to my family because we were all watching. And I was like, man, these people are assessing about their sneakers. This is kind of inspiring. I never got too into sneakers, but I remember I had one pair mm. that I was like, the Bo Jackson, Bo Nose shoes that I really wanted. And my dad got them for me for my birthday. I I you wore those things everywhere. And I remember when I got them, I remember opening the box, I remember taking them out. It was like the only pair of shoes that I obsessed about wanting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I am gonna do something I never do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make an impulse buy, I'm gonna go on the internet, I'm gonna find them and I'm gonna order some right now. Because these, these are originals, so, right? I don't even know. I probably, I, were there, Was that I, a, a reissue? I, I That's was definitely like, a reissue. These I did are not, not yeah. yeah, I did not, to me it wasn't, I, I was tempted to be like, all right, do I want, I bet you can get the original. I bet they cost a lot of money. I bet they've reissued them if they have. I'm not gonna. This is for me. Mm. I'm not gonna like obsess about what this would be to anybody else or if they're actually valuable. And I was like, I'm just gonna make that's, an impulse buy and I'm gonna enjoy it. And so that's how it should be. I, I assume that these aren't actually valuable to anybody except me no, as I, a reissue. I, but I think but, I think like walking down the street and another another sneaker dude would sort of recognize like the the you know. Those are the bows, just sort of like a head nod. Like it's a classic shoe. I think it's a, it, you know, for me, like classic silhouettes. Like I, I don't go. That's why you mentioned like, oh, I don't know how much these are worth or if there's much hype. But I always wear what I like. You know, I, I never, love these. I never. I mean, if it's if it gratuitous Velcro strap that's useless. 
Like that got to um, offer some support on the foot. I read about him a little bit right after I ordered him, and one of the reviews said they're not. I wouldn't recommend wearing them for for cross training Cro- now. But the, I I this is the, I think so this is the first cross training first cross trainer. shoe. Yeah. yeah. Um, Had to start somewhere, Bo. Are they dirty enough to be cleaned already? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, this would be like if you brought these into the shop, this would be like a ten dollar clean. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should just take. And them they with would you. look. They would look. Te- you know, you would. You would definitely be happy. It's not like oh, I could have. You know, we 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 just because it's a classic clean, a, our basic clean. It's mm-hmm. not like we just take. You know, a few minutes on it. These, this would be cool to do. Like, can I sit on after. the throne? You could. Definitely sit on the throne with I mean, these. is yeah. there a, is there still a like, clean them while they're on your foot uh, service we in can the make store? That. We can make, we don't have that currently, but we can make that happen. Like what, what, what we we'll do with the shoot, with the, with the throne is like when we, like we just had our three year anniversary mm-hmm. uh, last week and we'll do just free, free quick cleans. Like you jump up there and we'll, we'll clean your shoes for you. So what's next for, for you? I mean, you've got, y- You've got this knack for knowing where there's a need, and then you're, I mean, it's then creating things that are just hits. I mean, what's the next one? What I are you think doing? I for our ten year anniversary, um, you know, we're we've got a whole new bunch, like a whole new line of product coming out. Uh, so we've been working really hard on that. Um, I'm really excited about that. So in the next, you know, month or two, you start to see some of those drops happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely looking to expand uh, the, the the service and the retail. Um, we only have the one right now in Little Tokyo, but uh, we I'm looking at New York. So and you got an event coming up in New York that I think we won't be this won't be live before that, right? What, what don't you have? Uh, there's like some pop up thing that you're doing in New York. We um, or is this something sure. you did do in New York? Maybe we, I yeah, we've had a number. Of, yeah, one. I think I think oh, okay. uh, yeah, we've had last year we did two pop ups in New York. Oh, okay, um, and uh, so uh, we've we've we always have something going on in New York, whether it's like a an active you know a one day or two day thing at at, at a retailer okay. or something like that. But um, yeah, we had a couple pop ups last year, and I'm looking uh, for a space to have a, a permanent flagship. Okay, well I'll tell yeah. you, man, we. We really appreciate you coming in. It's, I mean, it's been really inspiring to hear all that you've developed and all you've done. And you know, even if mm-hmm. you're not into sneakers, like I mean, I'm I'm very much into Bo Jackson sneakers. Yeah, yeah. you're into one particular uh, pair of sneakers. It's you cool. know, I I think that there's um there's lots to be inspired by. So congratulations on, on all you. the success. Thank and, you. And thanks for coming. Yeah, in, man. man, I really appreciate you guys yeah. having me. We'll come down and uh, sit on the throne just to please, feel like kings. Please do. That would be dope if you brought those pair of bows in and we did a before and after or something. Ooh. That'd be cool. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah. There you have it. Our ear biscuit with Mr. Jason Mark. Were you inspired by his story? It was inspiring, right? Yeah, I've got lots of ideas right now. Um, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that the one thing I said about the shoe shine that would no with no shoe that's a foot massage, I got a lot of ideas about that. You the dr- shoeless shoe shine. You draw people in. Who wants you, a shiny foot, man? Mm, no, it's it's about the massage. Well, but it's for men who are self conscious about getting foot massages, but are going in for the shoe shine. And you get them in there, you shine the shoe, and then you say, "Hey, look shoe, at that cool bird." Shoe shart's coming off. You get them to look at something. And then you. I said shoe shart. I meant to say yeah, shoe starts. Yeah, shoe shart coming off. You get them to shart. Maybe <laughs> that's what you do. And then you pull the shoe off and you start. Mis- no, I'm not going to do it. I don't. Be- I, I'm, I'm not into that. I got strong hands, but I'm not really into touching people's feet. I like birds. Do like birds. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm just thinking. I'm yeah, susceptible to b- birds being pointed out to me. It was inspirational. Inspirational conversation to a guy uh, who just said, "I got an idea, and now I'm going to." So many people. So many people just. Talk. They just wah, 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 like babies, just talking, just talking and never saying anything. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. You wait, so I'm gonna. Jason Mark, make did a PowerPoint. It. He did invite it. Invite your aunt over. Make her dinner. Quit talking about what you're going to do and start cleaning. And do it, okay? Quit talking. Make a PowerPoint. Listen, they were already inspired. I'm just saying. You don't need to shame them. People just talk. They just do a lot of talking. Not you. Not, somebody not, out there, not somebody, you. somebody, 
You, we you're be- a talker. We believe in you. Become a doer. You're great at PowerPoint. <laughs> um, at least do the PowerPoint for the person who's gonna do something. Let us know what you think at hashtag ear biscuits. Oh, you went with at hashtag ear biscuits. <laughs> I don't even think that's a thing. <laughs> but I know what you mean, I understand. Oh, just do it, okay? Yeah, you know how to do it. I apologize for him, we'll speak at you next week.